What's good? It's Fever. Today we're going to talk a bit about Ashes of Creation. Now this is post PAX West, and I guess you can gather from the title that I did get my hands on the game and I was able to play the demo. Now the footage that you're seeing isn't from me playing specifically, I didn't record myself with a phone and I wasn't given special press permission. Hell, I went down to PAX as just any other person. I don't really do the convention influencer type things, and I sat in that three hour line to play the game for ten minutes just like every other person there. It may also be important to know that before this, I was pretty neutral about Ashes of Creation as a whole, and besides grandiose ideas and slogans, we've only really been shown that they can make pretty trailers, and this, not to belittle any of the work that they've put into it, is an almost out of the box feature of the engine that they chose. And when you focus on landscape pans and slow walks instead of gameplay to showcase your game, you can really push a perceived quality that's not reflective of the actual gameplay, and again, I'm not taking a shot. It's crowdfunded, it's indie, it's in development, I believe at this point Intrepid Studios has only been around for about 20 months, and showing what you have in the best light is just what you would expect people to do. And putting your best foot forward is just even more important in the crowdfunding and hype game, two things that Ashes of Creation is especially good at. And a lot of my own personal skepticism about Ashes of Creation isn't about the project itself, it just really has to do with crowdfunded games in general, and is equally applicable to the many other crowd funded MRPGs that are in the pipeline right now. Well, at PAX, they had a PvE and a PvP testing demo. I only really stuck around for the PvE one as the lines were silly and it's the only thing that really interested me. I was surprised to even see a PvP demo there. From the looks of it though, I think that it might have only been there to further showcase combat in a different context. Combat seemed to be the real unveil from these demos as one of the main criticisms Ashes of Creation has faced in the past is you aren't showing enough gameplay. And the PvP demo quickly evolved into a uh, convention meta of avoiding combat with other players where like the cleric was unkillable and just destroying buildings, but it was kind of cool to see combat in a different light. Now my opinion on the entirety of the PvE demo that I played, but also the PvE demos and the PvP demos that I watched, was meh. Just straight meh. It's not good. It was very conventional, very middle of the road, almost exactly what you'd expect from the phrase traditional MMORPG combat. Nothing was remarkable, nothing was all that terrible though, which might sound like a bit of a neg, but it isn't. You always get these phrases like, it was good for an early access game, and then people had these caveats that retell you its status, that it's not done and it's pre-alpha, and you must take that into account with your evaluation. Obviously, this game is a work in progress. Obviously, it's going to be iterated on, but obviously from playing it, it has a long way to go and it's not good now. Now the reason why me saying that the combat isn't good now isn't quite the insult that it sounds like, is that I'm not saying it's bad. And when I look at other games in development, most for more time than Ashes has been in development, that allow us to try out the combat, which granted, some of them are working from scratch and have created their own engines or whatnot, the impression in those pre-alpha states haven't been meh, but they've instead been like, this is terabad. You know, I remember playing Crowfall for the first time, and I feel comfortable mentioning this game because it's much better now. Now, but I remember loading it up and within five minutes just noping out of it it was so bad. I uninstalled it right after I closed the game and I think it was COE where I saw the combat animations in a YouTube video and just closed the video. I was like, I'm done with it, this is a waste of time. And the first look I had at Pantheon, I literally laughed. And I don't want to overstep my own knowledge base here, but I feel that maybe some of this middle of the road quality or this non-bad quality may just end up being more of the out of the box features of the engine that they chose, which is fine, they chose the engine, but it has that same glidiness and weird momentum and awkward jumping that you may have felt in other Unreal Engine games before, especially the ones that are in development and haven't had a lot of tweaking done to them. The demo itself, they led us through this short mini campaign kind of, they had us use our exploration style skills, abilities that the different classes had that interacted with the world in some way, and these might end up being cool in the game, but in the almost scripted run, they really just are gimmicks, and there's no real way to get around that so I don't hold it against them. You want to show them off, but you aren't seeing them in a realistic context. There was a bit of an escort, there was a simplified boss, some cool environments, but it pretty much was just running a quest line in an MMORPG. 
I think if you've really bought into Ashes of Creation, seeing all this was probably really exciting for you, seeing the game progress, having something playable for you, and I think that they're going into their first alpha phase in December, so even just getting a preview of what's in store for you if you backed them is cool. For me, it was rather forgettable. It was one of the things I was most interested about checking out at PAX. It was also one of the main reasons I went there, yet it was one of my lesser experiences from the event. There are though three things that did stick out at me, gameplay and non-gameplay related. First, Jeffrey Bard is a badass. It was pretty hectic and crazy there, lots of people, the devs were around shaking hands, answering questions, being available, and I got some words in with a few of them, but Jeff's enthusiasm really resonated with me, and yeah, like, okay, most people are excited about their game, I'm not saying it's just that, but as much as they make these grandiose claims and we meet them with criticism, I really do get the impression that he's trying to fix a genre in a very earnest and humble way, just trying to fix something that he loves, and I know that's a little woo-woo, but just know that I spoke and shook hands with a hundred developers and Jeff left the biggest impression, and I think it's because it didn't sound like he was making himself bigger than the problem and that he held the keys. It was just like, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna fix this. And it really just like left a big impression. Now, in that same kind of vein, while the gameplay itself was meh, the panel that they held was very interesting. A lot of the time you hear about energy and tone and atmosphere and that you just had to be there. And if you watch the panel on like YouTube or something, it ends up playing just like one of their Q&A live streams. But when you're there, you almost feel, again, more woo-woo, a communal hope or a faith in the title, and I think that's the difference between Ashes of Creation and other MMORPGs, as gamers, we, we've started to villainize hype, right? People getting excited about something, you're like, stop it. Ashes doesn't have hype, at least not in the general sense, and I know I'm splitting hairs here. Ashes has hope. They've really tapped into something, and it is a lot stronger and weirder, and I think I've only really seen it before in Star Citizen. You can draw from that what you may, but it made dealing and talking with a lot of the people there almost cult-like. It, you know, I'm not, I'm not drawing any conclusions here. I'm just saying it was very, very weird. And lastly, and this is a personal criticism that I believe a lot of the community shares, the combat has this quick time event where you try to stop a line during a bar. It's kind of like a sweet spot minigame, and you use this to combo or to build a resource for different abilities, and it also shows up in gathering. And I can understand that maybe a quick time event in their heads sounded like just the flair they wanted to give their combat something to distinguish itself from others, but you just end up focusing a huge amount of your attention on this small region of your or screen or ignore it completely and it doesn't really add depth or difficulty or complexity it's just this tedious thing to micromanage and I get that the whole game is an iterative process but I don't know how you get to the point where you want to include something like this across the board it's not even that it just shows up in a single class or a single archetype and especially because combat is a little bit more old-fashioned in terms of speed and time to kill meaning slower it just doesn't fit and maybe it's a placeholder for a sound cue or maybe a sword glint or maybe they're just throwing a mechanic at us and seeing how we react. I see something like this though, as the first playable thing about Ashes that is somewhat unique, and I just shake my head. You know, building this huge world with a focus on immersion, but here's a box to keep your eyes glued to. And Jeff, this better not have been your doing. Before PAX, I was pretty indifferent, pretty neutral about the title, and after PAX, I'm still pretty indifferent, pretty neutral about the title. That's going to do it for me. Until next time, until the next build, this is Fever. Pros. Getting there, he's down to 30%. And he's gonna use his ultimate again. Let's get him out of that cloud real quick. Awesome work, brother. Getting real close to putting him down. Let's put the pressure on him. 8% left. Oh, and yet another ultimate. Thankfully, our press tank is on the job. Just a little bit.
bit more. There he goes. Woo, fantastic work, guys. We have saved Maro's Mead for another day.